Hello class, you are welcome to this class once again. In this short video, we are going to examine the three parameters for description of the consonant sounds in the English language. The consonant sounds that exist in the English language can be subdivided into two different categories, namely the voiced consonants and the voiceless consonants. However, each sound in the English language can be described discreetly through three parameters. The first one is the voicing quality of the sound. The second one is identifying the point in the articulated tract where the air is disturbed in one way or the other for realization of the sound. The point in the articulated tract where the air gets disturbed for the purpose of achieving the production of a particular sound. Then the third parameter is the manner in which the air finally escapes when a sound is being produced. So these three parameters, one, the voicing quality of the sound, whether it is voiced or voiceless. The second one, the point in the articulated track where the sound gets disturbed. Then the third one, the manner in which the air finally escapes when a sound is being produced. This consonant table before us presents all the sounds that we are about to describe. Looking at this table, you'll find that we have deliberately positioned each of the sound at the particular angle of the, the, uh, the cells in the table. In the table, you have you no know, segmented positions according to the labels that are written against those sounds. Each of the cell has either one or two sounds inside it. The cell that has two sounds, we either have one at the right side and another one at the left side. But some have only one sound, which is positioned either to the left or the right position, the right corner. So this is done deliberately so that at a glance, you can identify the category of sounds that are voiced or voiceless. It is not the position of this sound in the cells here that determine whether a sound is voiced or voiceless. No. The sounds are already identified as being voiced or voiceless before being arranged by the scholars in the cells, in the consonant table. But this will guide us. It will help us if we take the position of the cell, the position of this, the sounds inside the cell, we want to take that as a cue to identify the category that are voiced that will help us. Remember, it is not this table that says, that makes the sound to be voiced, but what happens in the glottis when the sounds is being produced. That is another discussion entirely, but we are all familiar with that. However, need to know that, okay, on this table, there are sounds that are positioned to the right, while some are positioned to the left side of the cell. Sounds that are positioned at the right side of the cell deliberately happen so by reason of our need to be guided when we want to identify them as voice or voiceless. So the voice sounds in the English language by the arrangement of this table are positioned at the right. If you count them, you find that in the table here, we have about 15, we have 15 sounds that are positioned by the right, right side of the, of the cell. So that implies that in the English language, we have 15 voiced consonants and nine voiceless consonants, making 24 altogether. If we now want to describe these sounds according to the three parameters, then we can say that, all right, let's just go practical in this discussion. Let's look at the sounds here, going by the movement of this cursor. Let's take it from this position where the cursor is. The sound upon which the cursor rests here is a bilabial sound. It is voiced, voiced as we can identify it 
through the positioning of the sound in the cell here. So we say it is voiced. Being voiced, the place of articulation are the labels that are written at the top here. These labels are written here to indicate place of articulation. If you look at this arrow, it points that, okay, these are places of articulation. So going by that, we can say this, this sound is voiced by Libya, talking about the place in the articulated track where the sound is produced is by Libya. That is, it produced at the Libya point. And when the air escapes finally, look at the air. This is a manner of articulation. Manner of articulation describes the manner in which the air we use in producing the sound finally escapes. The manner in which the air escapes, that is what informs the word manner of articulation. When the sound is produced by blocking the air and releasing the air suddenly, then we say it is a plosive sound. Plosive sound. So we say this sound then can be described as voiced by labial plosive. Voiced by labial plosive. Let's take its counterpart. So being positioned by the left side implies that this sound uh, is voiceless. We can therefore say that this is voiceless, equally by labial and plosive. Let's take another example. Look at this sound here. This sound is voiceless. Looking at the place where it is positioned in the cell, it is voiceless. And where is it produced? At which point in the auto track is it produced? At the dental point. So it's a voiceless sound, dental and fricative. Fricative, as we are all familiar with, is a sound that is produced and causing a kind of hissing sound, hissing sound. Those are fricative sounds. So this is fricative, dental, and um, fricative. Voiceless, dental, fricative. Other sounds go like that. This is equally a voiceless sound, labiodental, and fricative. Voiceless, labiodental, and uh, fricative. We can simply use the columns to identify the place and the row to identify the, the manner of articulation. These are rows, all these are rows. These are, these are that are arranged in, in uh, horizontal form are referred to as the rows. So in each row, you have the manner describing how the air escapes. In each column, you have the place of articulation. So we can go by this this guide this guide to identify the description of each of the consonant sounds in English. The twenty four consonant sounds are present in this table. The positioning of the consonant sound is a guide to us to identify where they are produced and how or the manner in which the air escape which is generally known as the manner of articulation. So we have the screen of the sound being based on voicing quality, the place of articulation, and the manner of articulation. Voicing quality is not stated. However, being positioned by the right tells us that it is voiced. Being positioned by the left tells us that it is voiceless. And what is written at the, at the top in that, that, uh, that column tells us where the sound is being produced. And what is located at the extreme left in the row tells us the manner in which the sound is being produced. That is the manner in which the air finally escapes. Like, for instance, look at this sound here. This sound is voiced, knowing that it is positioned here, and it is produced at the labial point, so it is voiced by labial nasal. Nasal in the sense that the production of this sound causes the air to pass through the nose, the nostrils, the nasal cavity. And that's why it is known as nasal. By manner, by place, it's by labial. And by manner, we, we say it is in nasal. So this is voiced by labial, nasal. A sound like this is known as glide. We call it glide or semi-vowel. Judging from this place, as we are earlier said, it is a voice sound. 
and it is a bilabial sound and it is a glide voiced bilabial glide with this cue we can identify the properties of every sound that are positioned in this table those positioned by the right are voiced the label at the top of it in the in the column tells us the place of articulation and the label at the extreme left in that row tells us the manner of articulation. It is easy to describe the consonant sounds of English going by this guide as provided in the table of English consonant. Thank you for listening.